Hello friends, in this session we are going to take up a question of view serializability. Now uh, many of the students requested to practice some questions with some bigger schedules. So this is, uh, so this one is a bit lengthier or a bit uh, longer schedule. And we have already discussed its conflict serializability part in the previous session. So in case you want to view it, you can please view it. The both questions, the both things can be asked independently or they can also be clubbed as a linked question in one of the gate questions, right? So I uh, advise you to practice both of them. So first of all, whenever we get a question, let's say they, uh, they straight away ask you that check if the following schedule is serializable or not. And then what do you do? You first check from the conflict serializability part that is it conflict serializable or not? How do you do that? By drawing that graph. And if you get an acyclic graph, you say, yes, it is conflict serializable and hence serializable. If you do not get a uh, get an acyclic graph. If you get a cyclic graph, then you say it is not conflict serializable and we need to check for view serializability. Only if the test of view serializability passes, you say yes, it is a serializable schedule. Otherwise, you do not say that it is a serializable schedule, right? So let's start with this question. Conflict serializability, we've already discussed. So in this part, when you check for view serializability, you already know, we have already discussed some more questions. So you already know there are three important conditions which we need to check initially. The three important question, uh, uh, the three important conditions are initial read, update and final update. So this is the schedule with us and I'm going to check for these three conditions, initial read, update and final update. Right, so let's start with it. We have three data items, X, Y, Z. So herein we write the data items and here we write the operations. So we check that which are the transactions which perform an initial read on data item X. So clearly we start from here and we try to find a write operation. This is a write operation. So any read operation before this will be an initial read. So there is an initial read over here with T1 and there is no other read operation before this. So that means only T1 performs initial read on data item X. Next we check for data item Y in the similar manner. So we try to find So we try to find for data item Y and what we get over here is we get a write operation and there is only one uh, read operation before this. That means only T2 performs, a initial, uh, T2 performs an initial read before it. So we write T2 over here. Similarly, we perform for Z and we get this as the write operation over here and there is only one initial read over here, R2. And there is another read operation on Z, but both are from T2 transaction. So we write T2 over here. Then we check for the updates. In this situation, we basically check that what are the, what are the possible write operations performed uh, by various transactions on this data item. So if we check for X, we get W1X and W2X. So there are T1 and T2 and T2 writes it finally, that is T2 updates it at the end. So we write it in final update. Similarly, we check for Y. So we have T2, T3, T1 also, right? And T2 again. So, we have T2, T3, T1 and T1 updates it finally, right? Next, we check for Z. So, we have T2 and there is no other transaction, no other transaction that performs a write operation on it. So, we have T2 performing the final update. So, clearly, we cannot get any order from here 
but we are going to analyze these two situations so in this case now from here if we try to find out in order to check that initial read should not be violated and the transaction with the final update should be placed at the end the transaction with the initial read should be pl uh, should be placed in the front so the only order we get from here is t1 and then t2 right and in this situation what do we get we get t2 should be placed in the front t1 should be placed at the end so which is the transaction left it is t3 right so now if we just uh, try to find a common order by analyzing these two situations we get we come to know that these two situations are basically contradictory to each other because this one says that t2 t2 should come after t1 and this one says that t2 should come before t1 right so since both the orders are contradictory we say that no view serializable order is possible and since no view serializable order is possible this schedule is not view serializable and hence we say that it is not a serializable schedule we say that we uh, do not we are not able to find any serializable schedule in this situation so that's all for this case i'm going to see you all in the next video with some more useful topics till then stay tuned and happy learning